And the thing I didn't understand was Hello, everyone, and thank you for taking time out of your evenings to join us for our Daniels College of Business webinar. Uh, my name is Kent Conway. I'm one of the undergraduate academic advisors in the Daniels College of Business. Uh, I'm joined tonight by one of my colleagues, Mackenzie Moeller, uh, who you will hear speak uh, in just a minute. What we're going to do tonight is go through about 25 to 30 minutes of content about the Daniels curriculum and uh, have a particular emphasis on the courses you might want to take in your first quarter in the fall, um, saving time at the end for any questions that you might have. So along the way, if you do think of a question, go ahead and type that into the comment section. We will uh, circle back and address those. Okay, so our webinar is going to be primarily focused on um, information for students who are considering a business major. Uh, whether you're a first time, first year student, uh, brand new to college or a transfer student, you might find this information useful. You can see our agenda on the screen. We'll start with talking about which majors we have in the business college, our curriculum and how it works, specific classes that you might consider for fall 2019, a few important things we want you to know about being a business major, and then finally wrap up with the questions. So without further ado, let's start with an overview of the curriculum uh, here in Daniels, uh, focusing on the eight different major areas that we do offer. As you can see here on the screen, uh, the different major areas, uh, it's important to know that regardless of which of these majors you uh, intend to pursue at this point in time, that will not affect your fall quarter schedule. It will remain uh, the same for fall and really into the full first year within Daniel. So I guess long story short, you've got plenty of time to decide on which business major you want uh, as long as you know you want a, a business degree. Uh, worth noting is that economics is not a business major here at the University of Denver. Uh, it is instead in the College of Arts, Humanities, and social sciences. So if you're thinking you might want to do economics, that's actually going to be outside of Daniels. Okay, this pie chart breaks down the four general categories of classes that you might take to fulfill all the requirements to graduate with a business degree from DU. The orange common curriculum section in the upper right will include classes that all students at DU are going to take in the common curriculum, things like math, science, writing, foreign language, humanities, and social sciences. The blue business course section in the lower right will include classes that all business majors take regardless of which major you pursue. So this will be where you explore areas like data analytics, marketing, management, accounting, finance, and business ethics and legal studies. The green major section on the lower left will be your particular major whichever of the eight that you choose to pursue. You'll note that the number of credits does vary a little bit for each of the majors. And then finally, the red electives section in the upper left is going to be your electives. Electives are classes that you choose to take. We don't specify what you will be taking, so that's a great opportunity to explore other interests that you might have. This could include a minor, though it's important to note that business majors are not actually required to have a minor in order to graduate. The number of electives that you'll take will also vary a little bit depending on which major you choose, as well as things like transfer credit, AP credit, IB credit, and eventually your study abroad credit as well. So now that we have an overview of the four different categories of classes that you'll be taking within a Daniels degree, uh, let's take some time now to focus on specific courses that you may want to consider taking in your first quarter here in the upcoming fall. Keep the pie chart that we just reviewed in mind as we discuss each of these classes. And remember that you will be taking just some of these courses that we're about to discuss. Uh, there will be several options. Don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, you'll just be choosing from those options rather than picking them all. 
first course uh, to think about for your first term at DU is going to be the freshman seminar, or we call this class the FSEM for short. This course is required for all first time college students or those matriculating for the first time uh, in the fall. You will sign up for this FSEM course and the instructor of this class will also serve as your academic advisor throughout your entire first year at DU, even after the FSEM class finishes in November. If you're a transfer student watching this, uh, you should know that you will be exempt from the FSEM, so you will not have to take this class, and instead will work directly with a Daniels advisor immediately uh, upon arriving on campus. Okay, next we're going to talk about foreign language. All business majors are required to fulfill a foreign language requirement to graduate. Uh, now, there were a lot of questions in the preparing for new student registration at DU webinar last week about the foreign language. So I'm going to run through a few example scenarios of what this might look like. If you are wanting to start a new language that you've never taken before at the introductory level, and we do have a lot of really neat options like Italian, Latin, Hebrew, Russian, Japanese, Chinese, Arabic, German, um, then you're going to start in the fall quarter with the 1001 level of that language. You do not need to take the placement exam if you are starting a new language that you've never taken before. You will then take the 1002 level of that same language in the winter quarter, and then the 1003 level in the spring quarter. After you complete the 1003 level in the spring quarter, your language requirement will be fulfilled. If instead you want to continue with a language that you have already taken, we see this a lot with Spanish or French, but it might also be one of the languages that I listed above, then you must take the language assessment exam to determine which level you should start taking at DU. The link to the placement exam is on the screen now, or you can also find it on the new student registration website under the June to-do list. Once you take the placement exam, then you'll figure out what class you should start with. If you place into the 1002 or 1003 level of the language that you've taken before, then you might need to wait to start that until that class is offered. We typically offer 1002 in the winter and 1003 in the spring. So then you would take something else in fall and wait to start your language until the one that you need is offered. Just like the other students, your language requirement will be fulfilled after you complete the 1003 level in the spring quarter. Now, if you place above the 1003 level, that does not mean that you have tested out of foreign language as all students at DU are required to take at least one quarter of foreign language. Note that this also applies if you're coming in with AP or IB credit for foreign language. You do still need to take the placement exam and at least one quarter of language to fulfill your requirement if you place above the 1003 level. So if you do place above 1003, say in something like 2001, then you would only need to take the 2001 level, which would be offered in fall, to fulfill your foreign language requirement. Similar, if you place into 2002, we would likely offer that in winter, and if you place into 2003, then you would wait to take that until spring. If you place above 2003, it is likely that you'll need to speak with a faculty member who teaches in your language. So you might register for something else for now in the fall quarter, and wait to fulfill your foreign language requirement until a future quarter after you've had a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member in that language. We strongly recommend, no matter which of these scenarios that you're in, that you start your foreign language in the first year if possible, but if for some reason that doesn't work in your schedule, then instead we would want you to start your year-long science sequence, which Kent is going to talk about. In a perfect transition to talk about science or what we would call our SI natural um, category here at DU. This would be in the University of Common curriculum. Uh, as Mackenzie was saying, you likely will not be taking your science in the first year. Ideally, you'll be starting your foreign language. However, uh, some of you may decide to take science instead. Um, and it's important to know that the science or SI natural requirement is a full year sequence. So 12 credits of required science. Uh, you would start a science in the fall quarter, 
we have options ranging from biology to chemistry, geography, and even physics. If you start the science in the fall, you will be taking it all year, meaning in the winter quarter, you would progress to the next phase of, of that subject area. And then in the spring, you would finish the SI natural uh, category. You cannot start your science part way through the year. So if you don't choose it in the fall, it's not possible to start that science in the winter because they would be moving on to the second phase of that sequence. If you'd like to know more information about the SI natural requirement at this time, please know that you can watch the Preparing for New Student Registration webinar, uh, which is on the New Student Registration website, likely where you link to find this very webinar. Uh, and then finally, with regards to science, it's a little bit different with how you sign up for a science class because you'll be registering not only for the four credit lecture, but you would also need to choose a lab for the science. All of these sciences have a lab, and those labs are zero credit hours, but they're linked together with the lecture. In other words, if you tried to register for only one part, the lab or the lecture without the other part, you would get an error message on your screen while registering. This error message would read linked course error. And that would be an indication that you need to go and, and choose a lab that's associated with the lecture and, and register both. Okay. So the next class that we want you to think about for fall is going to be your math requirement. All business majors are required to take either business calculus, which is math 1200, or calculus one, math 1951. It does not matter which of the two that you take, no matter which business major you're pursuing. If you're thinking about something like a math minor, or maybe you're following pre-health requirements or considering a science minor, then you may want to take Math 1951 instead of the Math 1200 class. Either class will fulfill both the Business Core requirement and also your Common Core requirement for the AI Natural or Math category. If you have AP or IB credit coming in for calculus based on the scores that you can see on the screen right now, you do not need to take this class again. If you're still waiting to find out what your score is on the AP or IB exams, our general advice is for you to not register for the class that you may have incoming credit for in the fall quarter. You will know your score by the time you register for winter quarter in October. So if you end up not receiving a score that gives you AP or IB credit, then you can take the class that you would still need, um, such as math in the winter quarter. Uh, if you've not already done so, you might want to take the math advising, test, math advising tool test to determine if you are prepared for Math 1200 or Math 1951 now, or if you might need to take another math class first to prepare. The link to the math advising tool is both on the screen right now and also on the new student website under the June to-do list. And just like Kent was talking about for the science class, Math 1200 also includes both a four credit lecture and a zero credit lab. You must register for both the lecture and the lab that are linked together at the same time when you're registering. Otherwise, you're going to receive that same linked course error. The reason we're telling you this now is that's probably one of the most common registration questions that comes up. So we want you to not um, be confused when you see that on your screen. Okay, so hang with us here. Uh, Rick, keep in mind all of these courses are um, some of the options you can choose from for fall. So you, again, won't be registering for all of these. The next class we'll discuss, though, is our Info 1010, or what we would call the Data Analytics requirement. Um, ideally, you would be taking math or this class in the fall quarter, one or the other. Uh, data Analytics 1 explores the importance of using data in business decisions. And this course includes a heavy focus on Microsoft Excel. In the lab that's connected to this class, you will become certified on Microsoft Excel 2019. Unlike math or science, however, the Excel lab that's tied to the Info 1010 lecture uh, is it's going to automatically register uh, as part of the class. So you do not have to seek out the lab separately when you register. It's, it's built into the 1010 course. Um, the course will meet twice per week uh, in the lecture, and then the, the lab for Excel will meet uh, once per week. 
So a total of three meetings. It is not common for students to transfer in credit for this Info 1010 course, as there's really no AP or IB equivalent to Info 1010. But if you do somehow find that you transferred in credit for Info 1010, you'll still need to become certified in Microsoft Excel. So what is our solution for that? Well, we've created a zero credit class that is just the Excel lab. And this is gonna be Info 1011 here on the screen. Again, only the, the lab for uh, Excel certification. Some students will transfer in Info 1020, which is our next required course in the analytics sequence. Uh, the AP course, uh, AP Statistics, if you've taken that with a score of four or higher, you will have credit for Info 1020. We often get questions from students about whether or not they have to then go back and take Info 1010. The answer is you would actually still need to take Info 1010, even if you transfer in 1020. Okay, the next class you might consider taking in fall is Business 1440, The Fourth Industrial Revolution. This is our introduction to business class. Uh, if you visited DU in the last couple of years, we might have talked about Business 1000, Gateway to Business. This class is actually a new version of Gateway to Business, and we're really excited about it. In addition to the exposure to each of the different areas of business, this class is going to focus on exploring new technologies that are impacting business. So things like cryptocurrency, the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, robotics, and drones. Business 1440 is a really great class for you to take in fall to explore your potential interest in a business major or minor. So any students who aren't sure if they want to pursue business or want to learn a little bit more about it, we highly recommend this class in the fall to help you narrow down your interest in a potential business area. Um, note that if you did pass the IB business management exam with a score or five of higher, you will have incoming transfer credit for this class even though your IP, IB exam did not cover things like cryptocurrency, you'd still have credit for this class. Next course to discuss is our economics course, Macro and Micro Economics 1. All business majors are required to take Econ 1020. This fulfills both a major requirement for business students as well as a common curriculum requirements. So if you think back to the pie chart, it's actually fulfilling two different areas at one time. If you received a score of four or higher on the AP macro economics exam or a six or higher on the IB economics exam, you have incoming transfer credit for this class. If you took the AP micro economics exam, your incoming credit is for a higher level economics course, unfortunately, and you'll still be required to take Econ 1020. Okay. AI Society and SI Society are two of our common core classes that you might also consider as options for your fall schedule. All DU students will be required to take two AI Society and two SI Society classes to graduate. Um, there's more information about these requirements in the Preparing for New Student Registration webinar as well. Um, the Econ 1020 class that Kent just discussed does fulfill the first of your two required SI Society classes for business majors. So when you're taking your second SI Society, then that requirement will be fulfilled. AI and SI Society classes are great options for the fall but you also have all four years to take them. So if you don't fit those into your schedule now, don't worry, you'll have plenty of opportunities later. And I do wanna to note too on the screen, you'll see this screenshot that we have on the right. There are some really great videos on the new student registration website about how to actually use the registration system and how to search. And one of the best tricks in here when you're on the screen to search for classes in order to find these AI and SI Society and also the SI Natural Science classes is to use that attribute drop down menu as you can see highlighted in order to see all the classes that are offered that will fulfill these requirements um, because sometimes it's hard to know until you're looking at the full list what will count. Okay, so what happens if you take a course that uh, isn't any of the ones that we've just discussed. It was likely going to be a elective 
credit that you take. All students at DU are required to take courses called electives in order to reach the total number of credit hours required to graduate. Within Daniels, that number is going to be either 185 or 186, depending on the particular degree that you pursue. It's not a bad thing to take an elective early on, uh, even in your first quarter at DU, because you should know you're still fulfilling a graduation requirement. Electives are simply classes that you're choosing based on your interest in a topic which is not already required to fulfill a major uh, course. For example, if you decide you want to pursue a minor, which is not required in the business school, the minor classes count towards this elective area. When building your fall schedule, if there's something you would like to explore, you could take an introductory class in that subject area and know that that class is still counting towards your elective requirements. For instance, if you're thinking you might want to do our hospitality management major here at DU, you could take a two credit exploring hospitality management class to learn more about this topic and see if you might want to continue. We've got that uh, course on the screen now, along with a couple other exploratory classes, one in real estate uh, and a couple in international studies, which would fall into our international business major. Um, so keep in mind that if you want to explore something early on, that makes total sense and you could still count that credit uh, towards your degree. I just want to note with that exploring hospitality class there, if you try to register for this class, you might receive an error message that you need an instructor's approval. Uh, click on the title of this class to see the restrictions, but also you'll note uh, the instructor's email address, Lauren Sepulveda, she would be the person you'd want to email to get uh, permission to take this class and she will allow access. Okay. We want to focus on your professional development as an incoming business student right from the beginning of your first year. And so during your first year, all business majors are required to take this business 1099, which is a zero credit course to help you develop fundamental skills that are going to lay the foundation for your professional career. So throughout this class, which is taught by our Daniels Career Advisors, you will develop and perfect your resume and cover letter. You will also learn about all of the eight business major options from the faculty who teach in those disciplines. And so that's a really great opportunity to help you learn more about your potential interests and what career paths align with your chosen major. And then finally, you'll attend workshops on foundational business skills like how to network, how to dress professionally, and how to search for internships and jobs. If Business 1099 happens to fit into your fall schedule, it's a great way to start your undergraduate career. If it doesn't fit in your fall schedule, that's perfectly okay. You can wait and try to fit Business 1099 in, again, in either winter or spring quarter of your first year. Okay, deep breath, and we're going to put all of this together here for you. I know that was a lot of information, so thanks for um, hanging along there. One more reminder that all of those classes we just went through, uh, you won't take all of those. You're going to choose courses from those options to build an ideal fall quarter schedule. Those were the many uh, options from which you will ultimately choose four total classes or five if you decide to do the business 1099 that Mackenzie just spoke about, the zero credit class. Uh, and an ideal schedule, let's talk about an ideal schedule for fall now. Of course, if you're a new student, a, a true freshman, you'll be taking the freshman seminar or the FSIM. Then you would be taking either foreign language or science. Progressing from there, you would choose either math, 1200 or 1951, or the data analytics info 1010 class. And then finally, one other course that we've discussed and that some of those options are uh, again displayed on the screen. So in total, we strongly recommend students take a um, quarter load of 16 credit hours. That's typical here at DU for four credit classes. However, if you want to take 12 credit hours in your first term, have a little bit lighter transition to college, that's completely acceptable. Just keep in mind that if this becomes a habit and you do that in, in many quarters, uh, you might end up falling a little bit behind on your track to graduate and maybe would need a summer course here or there. 
So this slide shows four potential schedules that a first year business student might take in fall. They're all different and they are all perfectly okay. Um, for instance, looking at the second one there, you see that this student isn't taking either language or science, but this might be a schedule of a student who placed into the 1002 or 1003 level language of uh, level of their foreign language and is therefore waiting to take that until a future quarter. Um, two of these examples include the business 1099 zero credit class and two of them do not. They are all 16 credit hours, as Kent just mentioned, um, 12 would be all right as well. Uh, and then just to reiterate again, you still have a lot of time to explore your interests, to figure out your major, to take all these classes. So even if your fall schedule does not end up including everything that we just recommended, you can still be on track to graduate with a business major in four years. So let's talk a little bit about actually selecting and building your schedule. One thing to note is it's, there's no such thing as a perfect schedule. We work with students a lot of times who are looking for a very uh, unique schedule at certain times, but there are many different sections of all of the classes that we've discussed here, all offered at different times with different professors. Any section of a course you choose will be fine, that will count. Classes are offered all five days of the week to you. Some may meet Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday. Some are even Tuesday, Friday. When you throw in the labs with math or science, um, it's expected that you would be in class Monday through Friday. Uh, as a freshman, you will likely be taking 8 a.m. classes, and that's okay. You'll get a new schedule every 10 weeks on the quarter system. So being flexible is helpful and sometimes necessary to get the courses that you need. Class times generally run about an hour and 50 minutes twice per week, as we've outlined here on the bottom of the screen. Some classes such as foreign language or science can be different, however, and may meet up to four times per week. Okay, if you're considering pairing a business major uh, with pre-health requirements, the main things that you would want to change in your schedule would be the math and science areas. So note that you would want to take Math 1951, the Calculus 1 for your math requirement instead of the Business Calculus. And in addition, you would want to take a science sequence for science majors, um, which would be starting in the fall with General Chemistry 1. You will need to obtain special permission to register for general chemistry as a business major because it's designed in the system to only let in science majors. So you will need to contact the registrar for permission if you are on the pre-health track um, and just tell them that's why you're trying to take it. Uh, we recommend if you're in this situation that you build your schedule around the pre-health requirements first and then insert the business requirements around those as the business classes will have a lot more flexibility in when they are offered. And there will be more information. Um, there was a separate webinar um, with Nancy Lorenzen about uh, pre-allied health and then also more information to come during discoveries. So another subgroup of students are those in the university honors program. Uh, if this is you, if you're accepted to the university honors program, you're, you're gonna be taking all of the same requirements for the business degree. However, you'll need to take some honors sections of certain university common core classes. More information will also come uh, during discoveries orientation in the fall for, for this as well. But for registration purposes, you could look at honor sections of Econ 1020, if that's a class you would like to take. The second section, section two of that class, is gonna be an honors section. Uh, and there's also gonna be some AI or SI Society classes. Uh, remember to use that attribute search when you look for those common core classes. Now that we've covered a lot of information about what classes you'll be taking in fall, we have a few other important notes before we open it up for questions. One thing to note is that all business classes, including Math 1200 or 1951 and Econ 1020, require a minimum grade of C- minus in order to pass. This is different for common core classes like your FSIM, your AI and SI societies, which will require a minimum grade of D minus to pass. If you take a business class and you earn a grade below C minus, you will be required to repeat it in a future quarter in order to earn the minimum C minus grade. 
Prerequisites. This is a word that you're going to hear quite a lot in your time at the university. This word means that there's certain classes or requirements that you must fulfill first in order to gain access to another class that you want to take in the future. One of the reasons we've been harping on taking either math or Info 1010, the analytics class in the fall, is because both of these classes are actually required before you can progress on to the Info 1020 course. If you experience a registration error uh, while building your schedule that says prerequisite and test score error, this simply means that you're trying to register for a course which you don't yet meet the prerequisites for. We also want to mention that Daniel strongly recommends that you bring a PC computer to campus with you in the fall. There are many classes within the business core and business majors that require software that either does not run well or sometimes does not run at all on Apple computers. Students who are taking Info 1010 who have a Mac will have access to a VMware platform that will allow you to work on Excel through a remote PC desktop but connectivity can be an issue with VMware, particularly during your exams. Students in the past who have downloaded Parallels or Bootcamp on their Mac to run a PC platform have sometimes found that it significantly slows down their computers, and in many cases, students end up purchasing a PC eventually. So if you've not already considered your computer for the fall, we definitely recommend looking at a PC. You can find more information about the minimum specifications on the link on the screen right now. Okay, we know that there's certainly some people watching the webinar that may have questions about admission to the Daniels College. Like many business schools around the country, we have a secondary admission process, meaning there's some students who may be admitted to the University of Denver, but not yet admitted to the Daniels College of Business. The very important thing to keep in mind here is that your fall schedule and your schedule for the entire first year is the same whether you're admitted to Daniels or not. If you're not sure whether you've been admitted to Daniels, you can check by looking at your declared major on your student profile or the degree audit tool, which are both found on the student tab of Pioneer Web. If a business major is listed on your student tab, including undeclared business, for example, this means you're admitted. Once you get to campus in the fall, we will send further information about the secondary admission process if it's applicable to you. Lastly, if you did not indicate in your, your interest in a business major on your initial application to DU, you'll want to email Janine Todd, whose information is located here. You can see her email address, janine.todd at du.edu. Uh, Janine is our manager of undergraduate enrollment, uh, and if you're not already on our list of interested students, she can add you to that list so that we can start to communicate with you further about our secondary admission process once you're on campus. If you have been receiving Daniel's summer emails already, you're likely on our list of interested students. Okay. Kent and I are both part of Daniel's undergraduate programs, which is an office on campus that is 100% dedicated to helping undergraduate business students. Our team is here to help you at every step of your journey, starting with this initial registration process, continuing with Discovery's orientation in September, and then we'll have quarterly academic advising, career services, coaching, business student groups, regular events, involvement opportunities, and we'll even be there helping you graduate in four short years. We're very excited to have you joining our Daniels community, and we look forward to welcoming you in the fall at the college reception during Discovery's Orientation Week. We do ask that you watch for information that will come regularly from our office, a lot of it via email. Um, we'll start that this summer, and we'll definitely pick up our communication with you when you're here in the fall. For now, we definitely recommend that you follow us on the social media accounts that are listed on the screen right now to learn more about what to expect as a student in the Daniels College of Business. And with that, we will go ahead and open it up for questions. And on the screen right now, you can also see the Daniels undergraduate program's phone number and email address. Okay. So the first question is, if you have a language waiver, can you still get a business degree? 
Yes, so there are some students who might have an accommodation through Disability Services Program to take other classes as a substitution for the foreign language, and you absolutely are able to still pursue a business major if you have the foreign language substitution. So I'm gonna answer a question here. What kind of laptop do you recommend? Uh, we, we briefly went over that. It, it's strongly recommended that you would um, get a, a PC type laptop. And again, that's mostly for the Microsoft Excel and other Microsoft Office certifications. It tends to run a lot smoother on a PC. However, if you have a Mac already, you can upload some software which could get you around that. But uh, if you're going to buy one today, I would recommend a PC. There's another question here. What if I am transferring in credit from CU Succeed? For any questions that you have about specific transfer credits that you're bringing in, it might be best for you to just reach out to that daniels.undergrad um, at du.edu email address so that we can look at your record, see what credits we know are happening um, to come in and help you pick classes based on what you might already have credit for. I'm not familiar with that program off the top of my head, so I'm not sure what credits you would be coming in with, but we are definitely able to help you one-on-one -on -one to make sure that you're signing up for the right classes for fall quarter. Okay, the next question I'm gonna jump into is explain the difference between the Business 1000 uh, course, that is our gateway to business class that current students are taking, and the Business 1440, which we cover in the PowerPoint there. Uh, do students need to take both? That's a really good question. Uh, and the way that we're gonna be considering that um, is that these courses are essentially equivalents to each other. So um, if you know about Business 1000, maybe you have some friends here at DU already. Uh, the instructor for that course has really started to transform the syllabus to make it a more um, up-to-date, modern course and it's gonna focus more on uh, what we're calling the fourth industrial revolution. So again, looking at cryptocurrency, uh, artificial intelligence, robotics, and kind of where we're headed in the future with uh, really a more global market and business. So those are really gonna be the same requirement. Business 1000 won't exist for incoming freshmen. It's gonna only be 1440. Next question, can you discuss Business 1099 and when students should take that class? Hopefully we address that on the slide, but just to be clear, we want you to take it sometime in your first year. If you can take it in fall quarter, great. If you can't, that's perfectly okay and you can wait to take it until winter or spring. Um, it is a required class within the business curriculum and we want you to take it as a first year student because it's really important to develop those professional skills right from the get-go and it does help you select your major and understand a little bit more about some of the opportunities that you might have depending on your potential career paths. The next question here is, uh, would we recommend registering for classes that are only 10 minutes apart from one another? Um, that's a really good question, one that I get quite a bit as an advisor during the registration period. My answer to that question is that that's completely fine. Um, the campus is relatively small and you can get around in about 10 minutes. I just tell my students who ask me this question, if you find yourself you know, going from one far end to the other on campus and maybe running a couple of minutes late during the first week or two, just give a friendly heads up to your instructor, hey, I'm coming from across campus and I'm sure they're gonna be fine with that. So I would say don't worry about that 10 minute gap. Okay, the next question is about AP and IB credit and how that's different than dual credit classes that might be coming in from other institutions. So similar to the earlier answer, if you have uh, dual credit and you're not sure exactly what classes you're going to have credit for already, the best thing to do would be to reach out um, to daniels.undergrad at du.edu and you'll get connected with uh, someone, one of the advisors who can look at your incoming credits and help you determine what credits you can expect. If that transcript isn't here yet, we can talk to you about what we think you might be getting credit for. There's a um, transfer credit equivalencies database on the registrar's website that we can use as a tool to see what classes might already be pre-approved if you're bringing them in through a community college or another institution where students are commonly transferring things in. And similar for the will dual credit count for the math and science requirements. 
that um, process is managed through both the registrar and through the math and science departments. So if it's a class that other students have commonly brought in um, that we know will fulfill our requirement, you know, calculus might be pretty similar everywhere, then we can tell you if that's already pre-approved. And if it's not, then there's a process that we can help you work through to request that your incoming dual credit count for math 1200 or math 1951 or the science or the humanities or writing whatever it is that you might be taking will ap spanish fulfill the language requirement um, if you take an ap uh, language course um, and do well in that you, you would want to regardless still take the uh, foreign language placement exam as part of one of your to do's um, in the new student registration website. Uh, take that exam, see where you place, and then remember that you need to fulfill at least the third level uh, competency of a language. So even if you test uh, you know, out of several AP credits, you're gonna need to, to take um, one minimum of one course. The next question is, is it possible to double major with a business major and a major in something else in another school? This is a complicated question and definitely something that we would want you to meet one-on-one -on -one with an academic advisor once you're here in the fall to, to talk about. There are some majors on campus that work better with business than others, and the determination for what works best is what the program is. So if it's something in arts and humanities, such as a foreign language, because they have less major requirements, it's easier to um, put those into the electives that you saw in that pie chart uh, for what you can take for a business major. Because the business core and business majors are quite large, you will have less elective space as a business major than some of your friends who might be majoring in something like arts, humanities, and social sciences. So what that can mean is that in some situations, a double major will require extra time, summers, uh, it can make study abroad a little bit tighter. So we'd wanna map that out with you and make sure it would be something that would be feasible. Uh, major and minor combinations can be a great way to solve this dilemma if a double major isn't going to work in the space that you have. Um, and then there's other majors such as engineering, computer science, um, anything in the natural math um, science area where each major must be on their own degree and it gets very complicated. So if you're considering a double major, my advice for your first quarter would be take classes in the major that you're most interested in. And especially if you're thinking something like engineering or math, computer science, science, take their requirements and work the business requirements in if you have space and then come see us so that we can talk about it before you register for winter. Okay, moving on to a quick question here about participating in ROTC and how that might affect your fall schedule. Um, typically, the students that I've worked with who are members of ROTC uh, eventually have some two credit classes. So I would first address that question by saying you should still uh, build your schedule with at least 12 and, and still probably even the 16 credit hours of courses that we've discussed here. Uh, if the ROTC programs requiring a two credit course in the fall. I'm sure someone would be reaching out to you about that particular course. Um, I never really recommend those. The students I work with kind of know about that when they see me. So I'm supposing that there's gonna be a contact that will let you know about that. But um, otherwise your schedule should remain pretty much the same. Next question, if I was directly admitted into Daniels, do I need to pay another deposit to secure my spot? No, absolutely not. Uh, you don't need to do anything. Your um, admission to Daniels does not come with any additional costs. The tuition's the same. Um, so all you need to do is sign up for classes and show up in fall. Okay, computer question again. Uh, and I think that might be all the questions that we've gotten. Yeah. If, if this question is what kind of brand of computer works best, when it comes to PCs, we don't have a preference you know, between Dell's or Toshiba's or any of the other brands that I can't think of right now. Um, just a PC platform will work better um, than a Mac. And especially when you get to some of your upper level business classes, that's where you really run into some complicated software programs that you might be running that just don't work very well with Macs. Okay, so with that, we can 
wrap up if there's no further questions. Uh, again, a reminder that this recording will be posted on go.du.edu backslash parents and go.du.edu slash new student. I think that might be forward slash. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, and uh, again, thank you for your time this evening. Our contact information for Daniel's undergraduate programs is on the screen and uh, we'll be seeing everyone in just a, a couple of months. Thank you. Thank you.